Hey guys, Crispy Bacon back with another build video. In this video, we'll be covering a Titan Sword build that I call the Abyss Walker. If you are a fan of third person action games where there's a lot of melee combat, blocking, and parrying, then this build is going to be perfect for you. The main benefit of this build is essentially that we're going to have infinite heavy ammo for our sword as long as we're playing correctly. In addition, we're also going to be essentially invincible as long as we're using our blocking and our mods properly. The two essential pieces of equipment here are going to be the Black Talon Exotic Sword and the Stronghold Exotic Titan Gauntlets. Both of these exotics can be found from any exotic drop source in the game, and they can also be sold by Xur each weekend, so make sure you check with him. With these two items alone, we will have incredible ad clear and boss damage, be able to heal off of our blocks, and also gain damage when we block at the correct time with the usage of the masterworked Black Talon. I do want to mention that the completed exotic catalyst for Black Talon is really beneficial here, but if you don't have it, it does not completely break the build, so don't worry about it if you haven't found the catalyst yet. The Black Talon is an incredible sword with its own special R2 attack, or right click if you're on PC, which fires out seeking projectiles that do quite a bit of damage, and also has a small blast radius to boot, which allows you to hit multiple enemies at a time. Its exotic catalyst effect is called Reversal. Shots blocked immediately after guarding increase the damage of Crow's Wings for a very short duration. This allows us to block any incoming damage, even self-inflicted damage, and then use that to empower our Crow's Wings special attack, which then further increases the damage. And this damage increase is going to be about 66% more damage, so definitely not nothing here. It's worth noting that the extra damage from Reversal can actually be applied to two special attacks in a row, meaning two right clicks or two R2s. So when you get a successful reversal proc, it's best to just spam the special attack Crow's Wing twice to get that extra damage out, as long as the situation calls for it. So swords and blocking are going to be our friend here, so what better exotic armor to choose than the Stronghold Exotic Gauntlets? Stronghold's exotic perk is Clenched Fist. Guarding with swords increases move speed and does not drain ammo. Shots blocked immediately after guarding will heal you. So this perk allows us to block damage indefinitely, and also gives us a very powerful heal as long as we take damage right after we start blocking. This is the perfect synergy with the Black Talon's reversal perk, because every time we pull off one of these successfully timed blocks, we get to heal and we also get additional damage on our next Crow's Wing special attack. As long as you time it right, you can survive just about anything with this block, so with the correct timing, you are essentially invincible. A perfect example of this is this Gambit match where I'm flying through the air, just got hit by a boss, and I decide to block in case the invader was looking at me, and sure enough, the invader shoots a Xenophage bullet at me, which instead of killing me like it should, it actually heals me back to full health, and I end up surviving the encounter. So these are just the main points of this build, but it's really the subclass choice and all of the mods that we're using that really bring it all together and make this build actually viable and sustainable. So let's talk about every piece of equipment and mod involved so that you can go ahead and start building this yourself. The kinetic and energy weapons for this build are totally up to you. Lately I've been preferring Randy's throwing knife just because it's really solid at breaking barrier champion shields and also a soul survivor with 4th times the charm and firing line because it's a solid choice for boss DPS. For our subclass we'll be using bottom tree sentinel known as code of the aggressor and we'll get into why I chose this in just a bit. For our stats, we'll want to prioritize mobility and intellect for this build, but it's when we start talking about our armor set mods that really shows how we get the sustainability when it comes to the heavy ammo for this setup. With that in mind, the perfect mod to start talking about first is Heavy Finisher. When we have half of our full super energy, we can finish an enemy, and that enemy will guaranteed drop power ammo. Now this is a really useful mod, and being able to use finishers and swords throughout an entire activity really makes it feel like that action RPG I was talking about earlier. But this requires half of our super energy, and that's kind of a steep price to pay, so how are we going to keep that super energy up so that we can sustain the ammo? Well right off the bat, on the same item we have Bleeding Edge, which gives us extra super energy whenever we kill an enemy with our sword. And if that wasn't enough, you have to remember the fact that we're using a masterworked Black Talon, which means that every multi-kill we get, we actually generate an orb of light for ourselves. So we have decent super sustain so far, but I went ahead and took it one step further. On Bottom Tree Sentinel, we have the perk In the Trenches. Kills while surrounded by enemies reduce the cooldown of your super. And this is where things start to get a bit crazy. When we combine the super energy from Bleeding Edge, the orbs of light generated by multi-kills with Black Talon, and then in the trenches, our super energy is flying up. 
Whenever you see a group of mobs, it's best to just run straight at them head first and get as many multi kills as you can as quickly as possible, because all of that super energy you gain will then be used to use a finisher and get more heavy ammo back, and the cycle just keeps continuing. The other really important perk that's helping out our Black Talon ammo sustain is the Tireless Blade perk on the Black Talon itself, which basically makes it so that every other kill we get, we are actually regenerating sword ammo, and this itself is a really useful perk and really beneficial for the build we're going for here. And even if that wasn't quite enough heavy ammo to sustain you, we also have power ammo scavenger, as well as sword ammo finder, which makes it so that heavy ammo is dropping all the time, and we're also getting the heavy ammo from our finishers, so we're basically set all the time to use the sword throughout entire activities. Another important thing to understand is the time and place to use certain combos with the Black Talon. Spamming light attacks is usually the best way to take out small groups of mobs that are spread out in an area. When you're up against medium health enemies or majors, it's best to do a jumping R1, R2 combo, or left click, right click if you're on PC, as this is actually the most efficient way to do damage, because it does damage faster than the R1 light attacks, but it also saves more ammo than you would just spamming Crow's Wing special attack. As for the Crow's Wing special attack, the best time to use this is when you're going up against huge groups of mobs in a tight confined area, or when you're attacking high health enemies like bosses. It's definitely always tempting to spam your Crow's Wing special attack in every scenario, just because it's so powerful and flashy and satisfying. You'll see in a lot of my footage that I'm using it in what are not the most ideal scenarios, and if you do that too, that's definitely okay. But if you follow these combo tips, you'll help sustain your heavy ammo even further. So the rest of the mods that we're using are just icing on the cake, but it's definitely important we go over them so that I can explain the benefit of each one. So on our helmet we have the perk Taking Charge, which makes it so that whenever we pick up an orb of light, which there will be a lot of because of the Black Talon Catalyst, we are gaining a charge of light. More on the charge of light in just a second. On our Stronghold, I simply have an Intellect mod to help us get some more super energy because, as you remember, super energy basically just means more heavy ammo. On our chest piece, things get a bit interesting. We have Schwarzschild, Condenser, and Tenderizer, which means that whenever we do a Shield Bash melee ability, we can actually stagger unstoppable champions, and this act actually gives all of our allies boosted weapon damage. This is a nice to have combo, especially when you're doing high level nightfalls, but even when you're in normal activities, using shield bash is actually really useful, because when you're going up against a high damage dealing major, you can actually just stun them with your shield bash, and then switch over to your sword and kill them really quick. The final mod on our chest piece is called Protective Light. Whenever we are charged with light, those charges that we were talking about earlier after picking up orbs of light, we gain significant damage resistance whenever we lose our shield and go into that blinking red zone. This is especially useful because when you're using a sword, you tend to be close quarters, and things can get a bit dangerous when you're point blank, so this really triggers a lot because of how many orbs we're creating with the Black Talon Catalyst. And when you combine this with the healing and blocking capabilities from Stronghold, when we're in close quarters, we're really hard to kill, and as long as we're blocking and using our orbs of light and charges properly, we're basically unkillable. One thing to mention is that whenever Protective Light activates, it actually lasts longer depending on how many charges of light we had before it activated. And for this build, that'll cap out around two charges of light, which is totally fine because that gives us around 10 plus seconds of this buff. But this really works perfectly with our next mod, Stacks on Stacks, on our legs here, which makes it so that every time we gain a charge of light, we actually gain double what we would originally get. So if we were to gain one, we actually gain two. And this is perfect because this means whenever we pick up even one orb of light, we actually gain two charges of light, and that's our max capability of charges, so it's really easy to get fully charged, and being fully charged means every time we lose our health, we're actually going to uh, activate protective light and be really tanky. But anyways guys, I think that will about do it for the specifics of this build, so I appreciate you sticking around to the end here, I know I was talking quite a bit. But if you want to hear more of me talking, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and follow me on Twitch, Mixer, and join up on the Discord. We have a lot of people chatting over there, so we'd love to have you. Thanks so much for watching, and have a good one.
Thank you, Guardian, and we will never forget.